Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi. Welcome back to the fourth lecture, Chapter 5. In this lecture, I'm going to summarize the three examples I treated earlier and talk about some general features of those examples that we're going to use throughout the rest of the course. So in the three examples we've treated, we saw that the real parts of the eigenvalues completely determined the stability of the origin. The real parts were never zero. And that's a general feature. The in, in the second example, there was an imaginary part to the eigenvalues, but that didn't have any effect about stability. So the first example had eigenvalues with positive real part. This was a source. The second advanced example, eigenvalues with negative real part and an imaginary part, but it didn't matter. That was a sink. And in the third example, one of the eigenvalues was positive, one negative, but it was still unstable, the origin, and that was a saddle point. This is a general feature for e even for n-dimensional linear systems. If none of the eigenvalues have zero real part, then they determine the nature of the stability. If they're all negative real part, the origin is asymptotically stable. If at least one of them is positive, has positive real part, the origin is unstable. If some of the eigen, if all the eigenvalues are purely imaginary, zero real part, then the origin we have we have examples which for which it can be either stable or unstable. In fact, in the last chapter. In the problems, the last two problems, we had uh, a two-dimensional system. Both eigenvalues were zero, but in one example, the origin was Lyapunov stable. In the other example, it was unstable. Now, we have a very special terminology for this situation the notion of hyperbolicity. Um, that, is, that is a notion that permeates all of dynamical systems theory, and it refers to linearized behavior. It doesn't have to be a, about an equilibrium point. It could be about anything, and for it to be um, stable in some sense. So for an equilibrium point, the origin is said to be hyperbolic if none of the real parts of the eigenvalues of the matrix A. In this particular example, we have F zero real parts. So if we think of the eigenvalues as, as being points in the complex plane, none of them lie on the imaginary axis. If we have just one with positive real part, it's unstable. Okay, but if some are on the imaginary axis, more detailed analysis must be done. So for t in the 2 by 2 case, we can kind of categorize all of the possible situations. And I've done that here, and that's not so important for me to go to through now. But some additional terminology, remember when we did the saddle, the third example in the last, in the last lecture, we had the notion of stable and unstable subspace. Okay, for the first two examples, I mean, it was all unstable subspace in the first example, all stable in the second one, but now we had a dichotomy. So in general, the set of the span of the eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalues with negative real part is the stable subspace. Now there's a problem with what I just said. Uh, we may not we, we, may, we can compute all the eigenvalues, but if we have repeated eigenvalues, we may not have enough eigenvectors. And in the complex case, we have this situation where you take real and imaginary parts so that we can end up with a real um, ODE once we've transformed the coordinates. And we know what it's going to look like, but in that case, we say we have, because we want everything to be real, we, we say we have generalized eigenvectors 
vectors. Okay, that would correspond to the real and the imaginary parts for the complex case. And in this case of the repeated eigenvalues, remember we have this theory of Jordan canonical form, and I don't want to go into that because it's very easy to go down the rabbit hole of uh, a lot of linear algebra, and I want to move along to the dynamics of ODEs. So, but we still have the notion of stable subspace, unstable subspace, that would correspond to the, sp to the sp uh, span of generalized eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalues with positive real part, and then we have something we didn't see in the example. We have the center subspace, the span of the generalized eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalues having zero real part. Now we're going to see very concrete examples of all of these throughout the rest of the course. Um, you can read the rest of this chapter and get an idea of some of the issues in the two by two case. Um, but there are a lot of interesting issues. I mean, why are these invariant subspaces? Subspace has a very particular meaning. You can take any two points in that set, in a subs subspace, which also is set, add them together, and you get another point in that set, the subspace. And that's preserved by the dynamics. They are invariant subspaces. But to prove that rigorously, I mean, we can we can go some way. It's a, it's a bit of an exercise to do it in all the possible two by two cases. But to do it in general, you really need to not to talk about something related to the Jordan canonical form theory for matrices. Not quite that detailed, but pretty close. In any case, that ends chapter five. I'll come back next time with in, in, in the next lecture and look at the problems at the end of the chapter. But now in the next chapter, we're going to learn about what happens to all of this behavior, like in the three examples I just showed you, when you add nonlinear terms. Remember, this was we arrived at the study of linear systems through linearization about equilibrium. And we could ask, okay, what happens if you put linear terms on top of it? Um, and that's a very interesting story, which we will pick up after I've talked about the exercises. So until next time, bye.